Hi, this is Randall with Carter Hill Honeybees. Today I wanted to show you kind of some simple techniques I've learned over the years through trial and error. When constructing my boxes by doing some checks during the construction phase, a few seconds on each box to pay a little attention to detail, I've learned to save myself a lot of headache and hassle out in the field makes my beekeeping life a lot easier. So I kind of want to share those with you today. So right here is one of the five frame nukes I'm building. And it's just a pretty simple, straightforward design, just a butt joint. I'm using three 7 16 inch crown staples, two inches long, uh, and I've glued all the joints. Uh, I, I put these together yesterday and they, the glue's already set, but what I want to do is show you how I check a box once I assemble it. And I'm going to turn this kind of to the side where you can see it. So what I have is a simple speed square, and each box I build, I'll just verify it, make sure it's, it ain't got to be 100% square, but you want it to be relatively close. I also have a, a frame that's prepared here, and I'll go ahead and set the frame inside the box like this, and I'll slide it all the way across, make sure the slack is right, and also I want to check my bee space. I have a piece of wood that's 3 16 an inch stick. So B space is basically a quarter to slightly over three eighths. So I kind of check my B space up and down each side of the frame. Make sure that's right. And it is. And I can tell you from experience, if you get a frame out of square or the box is out of square and your B space is compromised in here, the bees will propolize it to the front of the back wall in there. And it makes it uh, it can be a hassle to get that frame out, prying it out. And just taking a few seconds to verify this will make your life in the bee yard much easier. And I do the same with 10 frame boxes and I'm fixing to show you. I'm about to show you how I assemble a 10 frame box. I got just a simple little jig here and I've got it clamped down where it's nice and stable to this workbench I have. I think it's really important to get you a good quality glue, wood glue and glue everything together it makes a big difference. So I'm going to get my tools all together here. It's a good idea to wear a good pair of gloves to keep the glue off your hands because you're going to get glue on your hands without it, as you can well see. And this makes the uh, Assembly process a lot better too, I think. So I'll start out by paying attention, make sure my hand holes are turned the same way. The, the 3 8 by 5 8 rabbit up here is turned the same way, the frame rest. And then I just come in here and put a little dab of glue in the bottom of each joint. Then I have a sideboard and I do the same thing. Except up here, you want to put a dab of glue there because it's going to make contact here by the frame rest. It don't take too much glue. If you put a lot of glue there, it will squeeze out and run down your box. I feel like it's important here to make a good effort to get the box as square as possible when you're assembling it. So basically, I just concentrate on one side at one time and I get one good and straight looking and I'll just go ahead and put it together. And see that just that little bit of glue, I had a little bit come out. Now, if you don't have a staple gun like this or you want to use nails, I would consider using screws on the very outside because the wood typically over time will want to kind of cup out and separate up here. This is the first time I'm trying these two inch staples, but I've noticed a lot of people using them. So I wanted to try it. It's definitely speeded up the process of assembly. I can tell you that for sure. So I'm going to continue to the other side over here. And that jig's real handy for that. Now all I gotta do is roll it over, apply glue to this side, just like the first two. And just to, to kind of show, as you can see, I put about a drop of glue in each one. That's, that's plenty. And I try to, in a way, compress the corners together to make the joints fit tight. And right there we have one box that's put together, nice and tight. Very snug. So now I'm going to take the square and verify it. And uh, it's pretty much dead on. Check the other side. It's definitely within tolerance there. So now the other thing I want to do, 
The reason I want to check this now is because if, while the glue is wet, if you need to make a tweak or an adjustment, it's much easier to do while the glue is wet. Put my frame in like that and slide it all the way up and down, make sure I got room. Now I want to verify my bead space on the end of the frame with my piece of wood, it's 3 16 Definitely in good shape there. Definitely will work. Now, if, if I figured out I was out of square a little bit by either checking it this way or, or whatever, I can turn the box up on those corners one way or the other, whichever way I determine needs to do it, and kind of push down on it and tweak it a little bit. And you'll kind of want to tweak it past where it needs to be and it should relax back up into the correct position or close to it. And it may take an adjustment or two to get it. But once you get it, you set it off to the side, leave it be, and the glue should set. The box will be square just like you left it. This technique has worked pretty good for me over the years. I still got a few more boxes to go. So when I get those done, I'll move this jig out of the way. But for the purpose of this video, we'll go ahead and put together the frame and show you how I do that. When I put together a frame, I take the top and the bottom bore and I turn them opposite of each other. And I just put a, a speck of glue and I turn them over, put, put a speck of glue. Take the end bars and put them together. And I glue them, then I just put the whole thing together like this. Lay it down flat and I try to eyeball it pretty square and then I shoot the staples to it. So I got four staples here. I've had bad luck putting them in from the bottom and the top. So I try to make it in such a way that it has to shear out. Now these two staples I'm about to put in, in my opinion, are the most important two that you can put in on a frame. And that's these two underneath. If you simply glue and shoot one in the top and you don't put one underneath, what can happen is if, if this frame is glued underneath and you come to pry it out with your hive tool, this top bar can separate. And uh, that's happened to me before. And it's a mess and it's a really aggravating when that happens. So when anybody ever asks me how to do frames, I always tell them that's the most important staple of the entire assembly. And then after that, probably these down here are the next most important. And obviously you want to glue these. So once I get the frame together, I take my speed square and I just eyeball it. If I need to tweak it one way or the other, I can I can get it lined up. And once I get it where I want it, it'll stay there. And I just take it and place it in the box and move on to the next. I've never used one of the assembly jigs. They look like they're pretty fast, and I've, I've had them recommended to me. I've just never took the time to build one. I guess you could say I'm intending this for somebody that maybe needs to put together 15, 20, 30 frames. They don't take long just a minute or so to do it this way. But uh, I highly recommend you make sure this is square. If this is off or whatever and you, you get it, you drop it in the box, it's gonna violate your B space and they'll propolize one of the other corners, the one that has the least amount of space that's under a quarter inch, it'll get propolized to the wall of your box. And it's really hard to get out a lot of times when that happens. Well, I appreciate you for joining me on this video today, and we'll see you next time.